The flyaway pattern is a structural design pattern that involves sharing an object in order to reduce memory usage. So for this demo, first we're going to demonstrate this application without the flyaway pattern, and we're going to see what our memory usage is, and then we're going to implement the flyaway pattern and see how much our memory usage has decreased. So for this demo, we are going to fill up a list of orders, and if we look at order, it just has a list of order items, and we can add an order item to our order, and then order item has details about the product that we're ordering and then the quantity of the item that we're ordering. So in our program.cs, we set up a list of orders and then we go through this loop 1 million times. So we're gonna be creating 1 million orders and then we add just a single item to our order and then add it to our list of orders up here. But this item that we add comes from our CPU order item factory. So if we look at that, what we're dealing with here is just processes for computers. So we pass in a CPU series to our create method, as well as the quantity that we want to order, and it creates that order item for the corresponding CPU. So if we run this without implementing the flyway pattern, let me just put a breakpoint here. So here we go, we are running, hit the breakpoint, and then we come over to diagnostic tools, and we take a snapshot of our memory usage. So again, 1 million orders, creating 1 million order items. Let's look at the objects in our application that we've instantiated and that are living right now. So here we go. We got a million orders, one million order items, and the inclusive size of our list of orders. So that is this list right here in our application. That is 176 million bytes about. And that's just because that list contains all of our orders and all of our order items as well. And by inclusive size, what that means is that our list obviously contains all of our orders and all of our order items. So 176 million bytes, not really that big, but it is big enough to demonstrate the flyaway pattern. So we're gonna implement the flyaway pattern and see how much this number decreases. So keep this number in mind, 176 million. So how exactly are we going to decrease our memory usage? Well, if we look at our CPU order item factory, we create four different CPUs. So let's say I run this method five times and each time my CPU series is an Intel Core i9. And then maybe every time I create this order item, I pass in a different quantity every time. Well, the only difference between those five order items that I create is going to be the quantity. All the other things like the price that we have here, the product type, the description, and the name is going to be the same. So in the flyweight pattern, this common state that could be shared between each of our order items is known as the intrinsic state. So that intrinsic state, we are going to extract from the order item. So let's look at order item. That's gonna be the name, the description, type, and price. We're gonna extract that from this order item so that we can reuse it between each order item. So that's step one of the flyaway pattern, extracting this intrinsic state that could be reused. So we are gonna extract that. So what do these four properties represent? Well, that's gonna represent a product. So let's create a new class in our models folder. We'll call this the product and we'll snag those four fields in the order item. So we can actually just cut those out, paste those in product, and then in order item, we can just have a product here. So we'll create a property for product and we can just call it product. And then we'll also get that product through the constructor and set that property. So now if we head into our CPU order item factory, now we just need to pass in a new product here. So we can instantiate one of those each time to pass in. We'll do that for all of our order items. Get our parentheses in place. And actually we have to generate a constructor. Let's do that. So in our product, just highlight all of these. Control dot and generate a constructor. So now we have extracted the intrinsic state to our product. So now the issue is that every time, and we can see this clearly now, but every time we create an order item, we're instantiating the same exact product every single time for each CPU series type. But we really do not need to be instantiating this product every single time. It's the same every single time. So we could just be instantiating it once, which would allow us to save a lot of memory, and then we could just reuse the same exact product instance across all of our order items that needed this Intel Core i9 in this case. So what we're gonna do is create a flyweight factory for this product that is going to ensure that we only create one instance of each of these products. So over in our models, we'll throw this in here. We'll call this the CPU product flyweight factory. And all this flyweight factory is gonna do is create a product. And that product is specifically gonna be a CPU. So we're gonna use our CPU series enum here so that we know which CPU we wanna create. So this flyweight factory is going to manage a cache that's gonna map each CPU series to the corresponding product. And if that cache contains the product, 
then we're just going to return it immediately from this method. But if it doesn't, then we're going to create the product that we want and then add it into that cache so that next time we execute this method, we'll get the product back and we won't have to create it again. And this will ensure that we only create one product for each CPU series. So for that cache, simplest way to do that is with a dictionary. So let's define one of those, just a dictionary that's going to map a CPU series to a product. And we'll just call this CPU series to product. Let's initialize that dictionary in the constructor and let's implement this logic. So if our CPU series, the product dictionary or cache, whatever you want to call it, does not already contain the series that we want to create a product for, then we'll set up a switch statement and pass in the series that we were looking for. And then we'll create the corresponding product for the CPU series in here and add it into our cache. So we already have those instantiations over here in the CPU order item factory. So we just cut each of those out. Let's cut out the one for the Intel Core i9 and add that into our cache. So the key will be our series and the product will be our new Intel Core i9 product. And then same thing for the other CPU series, except we have to update all of this data for the product. So let's grab all this, just cut it out. The Core i7, the Ryzen 7, paste in here. And last but not least, the Ryzen 5. I won't give any hints into whether I'm Intel or AMD. We'll keep that as a secret. I don't want to start any wars. And then lastly, for the default check, we will just throw an exception as we do here because the series is simply unknown. But anyways, once we get past this if block, we know for sure that the series that we're trying to create has been added to our cache. So all we have to do here is return the value that we have cached. So the key is just going to be the series that we just created a product for or already existed. So if we already contain the key for the series, then we didn't have to do any of this and we just returned the cached product. So now in the CPU order item factory, we are not going to have this switch statement. Instead, what we're going to do is take in our flyweight factory here. So the CPU product flyweight factory. I suppose you could also just call this the CPU product factory and leave out flyweight, but I wanted to stress the pattern here since this is what this is all about. But let's get that product factory through the constructor. And now creating our order item is pretty simple. So first we got to create our CPU product using the flyweight factory. So just create it and pass in our series and then just create our new order item, passing in the product and the quantity. So now our product, that is our flyweight that encapsulates all of the intrinsic state. And then the quantity is the extrinsic state that will vary between order items. So now in our program.cs, let's instantiate the flyweight factory and then pass that into our order item factory. And now let's run this and profile our memory usage. So we hit our breakpoint, all of our orders have been created. Let's get a snapshot and let's look at our memory usage. And look at that, now our inclusive size is only 152 million bytes. So honestly, I forget what our original number is, but about 20 million bytes smaller now. And if we look at our product flyweight, we did not instantiate a million of these, even though we have a million orders. We only instantiated three, actually. I would have expected four, maybe my random number generator is messed up, but either way, not generating a million, so our flyweight factory is indeed working. We reduced our memory usage by moving our intrinsic state to our product, but keep in mind, it's not like our memory usage was a problem to begin with. We were only using 176 million bytes, which sounds like a lot, but really isn't. And even with our flyweight optimizations, we only saved about 20 million bytes. So with the flyweight pattern, I really wouldn't recommend using it unless memory usage is really a big problem, like you're using gigabytes or maybe even megabytes. If you're in a situation where maybe you really don't have a lot of intrinsic state to reuse, then maybe the flyweight pattern isn't the best option. The last thing I definitely want to mention before I forget is this flyweight product we do not want these properties that have setters. So we want this object to be completely immutable because if we're going to be sharing this object across millions of different order items, then we don't want those order items to be able to change this product because then they'd be changing the product for all the other order items. And that is a massive side effect that we don't want to happen. So just to prevent that, we can remove our setters and make the flyweight fully immutable. So just to summarize, you should have a solid understanding of how the flyweight pattern works. So move all of the intrinsic state that can be shared into a separate class known as the flyweight. And then we can create a flyweight factory that will manage our flyweights and cache them to ensure that we instantiate the minimum amount possible in order to ultimately save memory. That is the primary goal of this pattern. So if memory becomes an issue in your application 
and you see a lot of intrinsic state that could be shared throughout a flyweight, then consider the flyweight pattern. But if you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video or are enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.